Right, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we have Fusion Power explain future or failure. This is going to be interesting. I don't really know too much about Fusion Power. This is from Kurz. They make amazing videos. Before we do get into this video, I am uploading a bunch of videos that I can't upload to YouTube, especially from Kurz. There's a link to the Patreon down below. Let's see what this is about, Fusion Power. I don't really know too much. The fundamental currency of our universe is energy. Bitcoin. Okay. It lights our homes, grows our food, powers our computers. Yeah. yeah, we need it. We can get it lots of ways. Burning fossil fuels, splitting atoms, or sunlight striking photovoltaics. But there's a downside to everything. Fossil fuels are extremely toxic. Yeah. Nuclear waste is... Oh, we well, see so many videos waste, about this. And there are not enough batteries to store sunlight for cloudy days yet. And yet, the sun seems to have virtually <laughs> limitless free energy. Is there a way we could build a sun on Earth? Can Jesus Christ, the what the fuck? Wait, is that what fusion power will be? It would be like energy, uh, man-made energy? Like, 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 similar to the sun? The sun shines because of nuclear fusion. In a nutshell, okay. fusion is a thermonuclear process. Right. Meaning that the ingredients have to be incredibly hot, so hot that the atoms are stripped of their electrons, making a plasma where nuclei and electrons bounce around freely. Since nuclei are all positively charged, they repel each other. In order to overcome this repulsion, the particles have to be going very, very fast. In this context, very fast means very hot. Holy fuck. Imagine. I'm complaining about 30 degrees. 14 million de Millions of mm. degrees. Stars cheat to reach these temperatures. They are <laughs> they so cheated. massive yeah. that the pressure in their cores generates the heat to squeeze the <laughs> nuclei cheated. together until they merge and fuse, creating heavier nuclei How would we be able to get, uh, energy in make the process. One. That, that it makes sense. How can we make that release that fucking scientists temperature? scientists hope to harness in a new generation of power plant. How? The fusion reactor. On Earth, it's not feasible to use this brute force method to create fusion. So if we wanted to build a reactor that generates energy from fusion, we have to get clever. To date, scientists have invented two ways of making plasmas hot enough to fuse. The first type of reactor uses a magnetic field to squeeze a plasma in a donut-shaped chamber where the reactions take place. These magnetic... Bro, this is the type of thing that's gonna literally... We're gonna make a man hot... Like a man-made fucking black hole where we're gonna be sucked in it and there's no earth, bro. Confinement this is what this is gonna be, man. the ITER reactor in France use superconducting electromagnets cooled with liquid helium to within a few degrees of absolute zero, meaning they host some of the biggest temperature gradients in the known universe. The second type, called inertial confinement, uses pulses from superpowered lasers to heat the surface of a pellet of fuel, imploding it, briefly making the fuel hot and dense enough to fuse. That would be 14 in fact, million degrees. One of the most powerful lasers in the world is used for fusion experiments at the National Ignition Facility in the US. These experiments and others like them around the world are today just experiments. Scientists are still developing the technology. And although they can achieve fusion, right now, it costs more energy to do the experiments than they produce in fusion. The technology has a long way to go before it's commercially viable. And maybe it never will be. It might just be impossible to make a viable <laughs> fusion reactor on Earth. But if it gets there, it would be so efficient that a single glass of seawater could be used to produce as much energy as burning a barrel of oil with no waste to speak of. Holy fuck. This is because fusion reactors would use hydrogen or helium as fuel, and seawater is loaded with hydrogen. But not just any hydrogen will do. I'm, I'm lost with like the whole point of this though, because we have the sun, so like, if we're trying to create something that's similar to the sun for energy, why? Specific isotopes with extra neutrons, called deuterium and tritium, are needed to make the right reactions. Deuterium is stable and can be found in abundance in seawater, though tritium is a bit trickier. It's radioactive, and there may only be 20 kilograms of it in the world, mostly in nuclear warheads, which makes it incredibly expensive. So we may need makes another fusion rare, for deuterium instead of tritium. Helium-3, an isotope of helium, might be a great substitute. Unfortunately, it's also incredibly rare on Earth. But here, the moon might have the answer. 
Over there we billions are. of years, the solar wind may have built I up huge deposits to borrow of your, uh, resources. on the moon. Instead of making helium-3, we can mine it. If we could sift the lunar dust for helium... Man, like, you know, planet mining is so cool. Like, planet and asteroid mining, we, that's, that's going to be the first step for us to literally colonize the whole entire galaxy. Because, you know, we... As soon as we get, you know, a building or mine on the moon, then we get like stations and we go, we just keep, keep you know, keep going. We'd have enough fuel to power the entire world for thousands of years. Oh, One fuck. more argument for establishing a moon base. Uh, if I, I, see, I see why we want this and I see why we want fusion power. You were convinced already. Makes sense. Okay. Maybe you think building a mini sun still sounds kind of dangerous. No shit. But they'd actually be much safer than most other types of power plant. A fusion reactor is not like a nuclear plant, which can melt down catastrophically. If the confinement failed, then the plasma would expand and cool, and the reaction would stop. Uh, it would only make a mini black hole. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Put simply, it's not a bomb. The release of radioactive fuel like tritium could pose a threat to the environment. Tritium could bond with oxygen, making radioactive water, which could be dangerous as it seeps into the environment. Fortunately, there's no more than a few grams of tritium in use at a given time, so a leak would be quickly diluted. So we've just told you that there's nearly unlimited energy to be had at no expense to the environment in something as simple as water. Uh, you know what? Completely forget when I said, why would we do this? Like, what's the point? We can just get energy from the sun and stuff and power plants and stuff. Uh, yeah, I see fully why uh, scientists are working on this because, uh, yeah, yeah, this is uh, definitely the way to go. So... What's the catch? Cost. We simply don't know if fusion power will ever be commercially viable. Even if they work, they might be too expensive to ever build. The main drawback is that it's unproven technology. It's a $10 billion gamble, and that money might be better spent on other clean energy that's already proven itself. Maybe we should cut our losses. Or maybe when the payoff is unlimited clean energy for everyone, it might be worth the risk. No, it definitely is because like the the way that he's talking about right now, like yeah, everything costs a lot at the start, but then you get your money back from it. So you take the ten billion pound gamble, right? If that pays off, you're gonna make so much fucking more. Videos like this one. But really, really good video. Enjoy that one. Hopefully you guys did as well. If you guys got any videos that you want me to react to? Link them down in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.